Radio Theater brings you Margaret O'Brien, Charles Lawton, and Tom Drake in The Canterville Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, your guest producer, Mr. Hal Wallace. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe you've heard that story of two ghosts indulging in a bit of phantom conversation. One turned to the other and asked that question that has troubled ghosts since time began. Do you believe in people? We, we bring you tonight the story of a ghost who cherished very little confidence in people and even less faith in himself, though legend dubs him one of England's most spectacular phantoms. Charles Lawton plays the title role in Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's comic fantasy, The Canterville Ghost. Co-starred with Mr. Lawton is an actress still young on the vine, and shortly to be starred in MGM's Our Vines Have Tender Grapes, seven-year-old Margaret O'Brien, winner of this year's Academy Award. Also in our cast is Tom Drake, who, as Cuffy Williams, finds himself billeted with American expeditionary troops in the ancient castle of the Canterville, where what transpires may sometimes challenge your belief at the same time that it sparks your risibility. While the setting of our play is wartime England, America has had its share of ghosts too. In fact, there was a time when it was considered a safe precaution to dunk all suspicious characters in water. If they stayed under, they were innocent of harboring antisocial spirits. While we'd hardly tolerate such laundering in our present-day society, unless, of course, we added Lux Flakes to the process. Give Lux Flakes a ghost of a chance, and you'll never work yourself into a skeleton with old-fashioned methods. We lower our lights for the first act of the Canterville Ghost, starring Margaret O'Brien as Lady Jessica de Canterville, Charles Lawton as Sir Simon, and Tom Drake as Cuffy Williams. <laughs> Authorities on the subject of phantoms declare that the most fearsome ghost in all the British Isles is that of a somewhat overweight nobleman named Sir Simon de Canterville. Haunting Canterville Castle for 300 years, this portly apparition has been unique for its keen sense of showmanship and its spectacular variety of tricks, shapes, and sound effects. The ghost originated in 1634, when Sir Simon was scheduled to fight a duel. He took one look at his fierce and towering opponent and ran away from the field of honor in a startling display of speed and cowardice. He was chased to his father's castle by his frustrated opponent, Sir Valentine. means this violation of my home. Lord Canterville? Aye. I am Sir Valentine of Bolton Manor. Your son, Sir Simon, having accepted my challenge, fled before my sword. Fled? You lie, Sir Valentine. I demand that the fat coward faces me. You are new to these parts, Sir Valentine, or you would know that cowardice in a Canterville is like snow in July. Every Canterville bears on his neck the Canterville birthmark. It is the badge of valor. So call off your hounds and leave these all. Fine words, my lord, but it seems the hounds have found their quarry. That room there. Why is the door closed? And why do my hounds leap upon it? No son of mine cowers behind the door. No? Then my lord can have no objection to sealing up the door with stone and mortar? I certainly can. I have too great a regard for my house. For your house, my lord, or for your son? Charles, Thomas, fetch the stonemasons. Tell them to bring their brick and mortar. One more stone, Sir Valentine, and the room is sealed. Are you satisfied? Aye. And you still think my son is in that room? If he's a coward, why is he not called? He is a coward. Father, father! Ah! He finds his tongue at last. I heard Mason, nothing. Mason, stop. I heard nothing. Continue, Masons. Seal up the wall. Father, father! It is Simon, my son. My lord. There is no one in that room. Put in the last stone, I say. Put it in. Father, father! But, my lord, t'was only meant in jest. Leave my house. Aye, but tis thy son thou hast entombed there. And to you, Masons, get you hence. Amy, my lord. 
Simon de Cantadil, who well I know it is thou behind this masonry, but because thou hast dishonored thy proud blood, that room shall be thy tomb. When thou art dead, may thy craven spirit walk the halls of Canterville Castle until a kinsman shall wear thy signet ring and perform for thee the brave deed thou didst fail to do. So did Sir Simon die, and so was born the Canterville ghost. Now it's 1942. Canterville Castle stands silent and deserted, inhabited only by a slightly tired but still fearsome phantom. The only remaining Canterville is Lady Jessica. She and her aunt find living less disturbing in a modest cottage on the castle grounds. Lady Jessica is seven years old. Auntie, Auntie, I just saw him. I just saw the ghost. The ghost, dear? Where? On the roof of the castle. Oh, that was the tinsmith, darling. He's mending the water spout. We're turning the castle over to some American soldiers. American soldiers? The rangers, I believe they're called. Like our commandos. But good gracious, Auntie. Can they live in the castle when it is haunted? Your family did, darling, until 20 years ago. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, Potter? Everything's ready at the castle. We were wondering about tea, ma'am. Of course. I'll be there shortly. Yes, ma'am. You are going, Auntie? Certainly, dear. They'll be our guests. Noblesse oblige. But, Auntie, you're not well. Remember what the doctor said? Mm, well, perhaps I shouldn't. Auntie, what does it mean? No bless, oh, please. Oh, it's just an expression, darling. But what does it mean? Well, no bless, oh, please is French. Those of us who are nobly born must prove ourselves worthy by being kind and thoughtful of others. So when guests arrive, we must see that they enjoy that day. Auntie, these Americans, will they be cowboys and Indians? Mm-hmm, some of them, I dare say. What does one do to make Indians welcome? Jessica, you're not going to the castle. Well, someone should greet our soldiers. But aren't you afraid of the ghost? Oh, yes, Auntie. And you still want to go? I really should. It's my castle. And no bless oblige. It starts when you're born, doesn't it? <laughs> Run along then, darling. The Americans should be there now. Thank you, Auntie. And don't worry. The ghosts almost never come out in the daytime. <laughs> Gentlemen, but Lady Jessica has just arrived. She'd like to say good evening to you, soldiers. Well, tell her we'd be honored. Very good, sir. What do you say to a dame that's a lady? Do you have to kiss her hand? Now watch it. Lady Jessica de Canterville. Good evening, gentlemen. Holy smoke. It's a midget. No. No, it's a half point. How do you do? I want you to all know I'm glad you're here. And I do so hope you'll enjoy your stay in my castle. Well, lady, well, lady may I say on behalf of my uh, fellow Americans that we're very grateful for your hospitality. Yeah, uh, likewise. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you'll excuse the fellas, I hope. Uh, yes, we thought Lady Jessica was... Yeah, a... yeah, you see, I, I thought that a girl had to be married before she was a lady. Oh, dear, no. A lady is a lady when she behaves like one, my auntie says. Which one of you are Indians? Oh, that tall fellow, Trigger, he's an Indian. Oh, to which tribe do you belong? He's a Hoboken Indian. <laughs> I don't believe I've ever read about that tribe. <laughs> Please, sir, gentlemen. Of course. Will you pour, my lady? I'd like to, um, Mr. Uh... Uh, Williams, Private Cuffy Williams. I shall be happy to, Private Williams. This way, gents. Who did that? Come on now, who did it? Who did what, Sergeant? Who made that spot on the rug? Who spilt the tea? Speak up. Oh, that's not tea, sir. It ain't? No, sir. It's blood. Blood? blood. Quite so. What do you mean? The blood of Lady Barbara Modish. She stabbed herself in the throat when she saw him. Him? Who was him? Sir Simon, our ghost. Oh. Your ghost, did you say? Yes, he's quite the most famous ghost in England. 
And he lives here in this castle. Now, wait a minute. Well, if you don't want me to tell you about... Oh, but we do, we do. Now, give the lady a chance, fellas. If she says her ghost is haunted, well, who are we to quibble? It may sound irregular to you, but I have seen the ghost myself. No fooling. And that's the door to his bedchamber behind that tapestry. Isn't it, Mrs. Potter? Aye. He was walled up in there centuries ago. Holy catfish. Well, that's awful. Yes. Every night now on the stroke of twelve, his spirit walks the hall. Searching for a kinsman with the mark at the Canterville. Gentlemen, beware. I shouldn't tell you this before bedtime, but the Dowager Duchess of Stutfield was found one night on her balcony, stark, staring mad. There's the loveliest picture of her gibbering like an idiot. You don't say. That's awful. And Lady Margaret Bilton, she drowned herself in the fish pond. Because do you know why? Because there he was again with long green fingers twitching with palsy and his eyes burning like coal. The bloodsucker of Bexlingor. Bloodsucker? Didn't I tell you, fellas? Who are we to quibble? What is your name, please? Cuffy Williams. Well, Cuffy Williams, I know right well that you've been laughing at me. Oh, no, my lady, no. But just you wait until midnight. It's 12 o'clock. Oh, so what? Hey, Cuffy, do you think there's anything in this ghost business? Oh, for crying out loud. Pipe down, you guys. I said pipe down. That ain't us, Sarge. Sounds like somebody dragging ash cans around. No, no, it's changed. Hey, look, there's a light in the stand. Hey, look, it's taking shape. No, it's a ghost. It's him. It's Sir Simon. I am the ghost of Sir Simon de Canterville. Did you ever see a man slice off his own head? Observe. It's off. A head without a body, a body without a head. Now it's on. Now it's off. Now it's on again. <laughs> yeah, it's on, but they have it on backwards. Have I? Excuse me. Is that better? Ah, uh, scram, little boy. <laughs> take care, take care. Take care. Stop, I'm fellas. I'm going to let them have it. Oh, God. Stop that hideous noise. Stop it. Hey, he's full of the bullets, but right through them. So what? They scared him off, didn't they? <laughs> well, let's face it, Sarge. That was a real ghost. Yeah, I don't believe it, but I saw it. Hey, hey, what if he comes back? Well, we've got to scare him again. Scare a ghost? Sure, and this time scare him good. Now listen, you guys, I've got an idea. We put on our gas masks, take the sheets and wrap them around us, and then when he comes back... How many? Good morning, men. Good morning, 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 morning. Well, from now on, we're officially attached to the British commandos. We're going to celebrate with a 10-hour endurance hike. Oh, oh. What's the matter with the men, Sergeant? Uh, sir, uh, I, uh, I'm afraid they didn't sleep so good last night. Oh, why not? Well, uh, maybe it was, uh, w- well, you know how it is, a strange place. Uh... Oh. Jordan, is that what kept you up, a strange place? Oh, oh, no, sir. Uh, what kept me up was seeing the ghost. Wasn't it, Eddie? Oh, yes, sir, that's right. You saw a ghost? Oh, you should have seen him, sir. He cut off his own head. We shot at him. Then he put on sheets and gas masks and we scared him away for good. I hope... All right, Sergeant. What really kept him up last night? Well, it was the ghost, sir. Ghost, huh? Form the platoon. I guarantee the men will sleep tonight. Yes, sir. Paul. Hey. Williams, where'd you get that limp? Oh, it's nothing, sir. I was running up the stairs. Chased by the ghost? Oh, no, sir. I was chasing him. Well, you can chase yourself right back into that castle and spend the next ten hours sweeping the floors. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, well. Hello there, lady. Oh, 
Oh, it's you. Who did you think it was? I, oh, no one. I was just bringing these onions into the pantry. Really? Then why did you take that great circle route? I, oh, Auntie thought the mess I didn't might like some onions. I'm a brownie and brownies raise onions. Oh, come now. You were afraid I was a ghost. Well, what if I was? Well, he's nothing to be afraid of. Didn't he come last night? Sure, and we chased him right up the chimney. Oh, you didn't. Oh, you think I'm kidding, huh? Well, we'll ask the old foxy grandpa himself. Who? The ghost. Oh, that won't be necessary. Let's see. Uh, this is the door to the room that's walled up, isn't it? Hmm, pretty solid. Hey, grandpa, open up. Well, what do you know? It wasn't locked. Oh, no, please. Our auntie's expecting me home. Come over here. Come on. That's right. Now, look, you just pretend you're not afraid and you won't be. That's all there is to it. Are you sure? I'll prove it to you. Come on. Hey, ghost, where are you hiding? That must be where he was walled up. Hmm, those bricks look loose. Maybe I could find a... Well, what do you know? Look. What? Over there on top of the mantel. Sir Simon, he's sitting on the mantel. But you invade even my tomb. Will there be no place I could call sanctuary? What are you doing up there? Tried to keep out of drafts. I have a slight head cold. <laughs> well, drift down here. There's someone I want you to meet. I have already bet your colonial ruffians. They pursued me through the hall like ghosts. Cubans. Now, nobody's going to hurt you, Grandpa. I want you to meet Lady Jessica. Sir Simon the Ghost. The lady. Uh, how do you do? Not at all well, thank you. That... <clears throat> Bless you. Oh, thank you. Had a girl. Oh, she's been scared stiff of you. And I just wanted to show her that you wouldn't hurt a flea. Sir, my record speaks for itself of that broken reign of terror for three centuries. Well, record or no record, as long as her ladyship's around, you've got to behave yourself. It is absurd asking me to behave myself. Quite absurd. I bust rattle my chains that groan through keyholes. I bust gibber from the oriel window on the first and third Wednesdays of every month. It is my solemn duty to haunt these halls. Oh, that's a lot of ectoplasm. But, Cuffy, he's the family ghost. Americans, child. What could a people without ancestors know about ghosts? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You never heard of the Headless Horseman? Or, uh, Red Grange, the Galloping Ghost? Or Mrs. Pruneface? Provincial stuff. Spirits with neither crest nor title. Titles? Or well, what about Count Basie? Duke Ellington, the King of Swat? Nobility and a democracy, Balderdash. But to Simon, we've had democracy here in England ever since the Magna Carta. Madam, I have never chosen to recognize it. But you should, Sir Simon. That's what we're fighting this war about. That's the stuff, my lady. You see, you're not afraid of bid. Oh. Well, now that you two Cantervilles are acquainted, you must have a lot of family matters to gab about. So, well, I'll get on with my cleaning. You sure you're all right, my lady? Yes, thank you. I'll see you later. Unless you'd rather be alone. Oh, no, 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 please. Pray sit down. I, I've forgotten my manners. Well, if I may see so, you could have been a little more polite to Cuffy just now. After what he and his bad of hooligans did to me, I may have very little else, but I still have my pride. But you frighten them. I must frighten people. I have a reputation to uphold. The most fearsome phantom in all England. Cuffy told me that they chased you up the chimney last night. That's because they wore those ghastly masks and shrouds. Lady Jessica, I can pretend no longer. Since last night, it is I who am frightened. I who tremble at the slightest noise. Oh, you poor, poor ghost. Do you know what it means to be a ghost? To live in emptiness between heaven and earth, with nothing for company but bitter memories. But you have to keep on being a ghost. I am condemned to be a ghost until a kinsman perform a brave deed in my behalf. Oh, if I could only rest, if I could only die... Oh, to be buried in the soft brown earth in the garden beyond the pine woods. To have no yesterday and no tomorrow. 
Oh, dear. I wish I could do a brave deed for you. How's it go, lady? Oh, fine. Sorry to bust up this reunion, but the Louie will be back in a minute. Goodbye, Sir Simon. And I'm very happy to have met you. The lady. Copy, I think you ought to tell your friends not to chase him up the chimney anymore. Well, that depends on him. But he's so old and tired. Oh. Hey, hey, take it easy. I stumbled on my shoelace. It's untied. Well, stand still. I'll tie it for you. Copy. Huh? What's that on your neck? That mark. Oh, that's just a birthmark. Hey. Hey, where are you going? This something I have to tell Sir Simon is very important. I've got to tell him. Sir Simon, Sir Simon. Are you back so... That <coughs> suit, my lady? Cuffy has the cannibal birthmark on his neck. What, that American ruffian? Exactly like my father had. He must be a Canterville. Isn't that wonderful? Gannon, what if he be a Canterville? Shall I prance around joyously like a saucy antelope? But Sir Simon, if Cuffy is a Canterville, and if he does a brave deed for you, he can't save you, can't he? Can it be that they have concealed from thee why I am still here? Just fancy it is merely because I cannot find the kinsman. Well, I've overheard Mr. Potter say that all the Cannavilles always turn out to be cowards. But that isn't true, is it? Cowards? Gross flattery. Had they twice the courage to only give them half the name. Sir Simon. Thy grandfather, would he mount a horse? Thy father, so fearful of water that he trembled in his bath. Or thyself swooning at the bare sight of my shadow. Really now, it's your family too, Sir Simon. Only too well do I know it. But Cuppy can save you. I know it. Mm. It isn't true that all cannibals have to be cowards. I was a coward, wasn't I? I was frightened to death of you. And now look at me. I'm not afraid of you in the least. Don't you see, Sir Simon? They date is in the Canterville blood and bones. It isn't in my blood and bones, and it isn't in Cuffy's. Oh, Sir Simon, I'll arrange for you to meet him again tonight in the garden beyond the pine woods. And if it turns out that he is a Canterville, my goodness, then you'll be able to go to sleep at last. Very well, my child. At seven, I gibber in the portrait gallery, following which I practice horrible hallucinations. If these go well, I'll meet thee in the garden shortly before eight. <laughs> Two of the Canterville Ghosts, starring Charles Lawton, Margaret O'Brien, and Tom Drake, will continue in a moment. Now, let's listen in on a conversation in one of Hollywood's popular restaurants. No dessert for me, just coffee. Oh, dear, this new diet. Oh, Betty, what are you staring at? That girl at the table in the corner. She has on a rayon print dress, just like yours. Where? Oh, oh, she must have bought it last year, too. What do you mean? Yours looks brand new. Oh, heavens no. I got it at the beginning of last summer. You'd never know it. Hers looks much older than that. Sort of faded and washed. Meow. <laughs> she probably did wash it out the wrong way. Better not wash yours, then, if that's what happened. Really? I've done it lots of times already. No. But they look so different. You must have a knack. No knack. Just rock flakes. I always use them, and I never had a dress look like that in my life. Not so loud. She's coming this way. It would do her good to listen. Yes, it would help that girl to know about Lux Flakes. Actual washing tests prove that gentle Lux care keeps colors lovely up to three times as long. So don't risk wash day methods that are hard on fabrics. Strong soap, hot water, rough handling can make colors look drab far too soon. Let Lux keep your washables lovely longer. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act two of the Canterville Ghost, starring Charles Lawton as Sir Simon... Margaret O'Brien as Lady Jessica, and Tom Drake as Cuffy Williams. (laughs) 
Nightfall envelops the massive turrets of Canterville Castle. In a garden beyond the pine woods, Lady Jessica and Tuppy Williams patiently await the ghost of Sir Simon. Suddenly, Jessica sees a faint, phosphorescent glow. Her face brightens in response. You got the Simon. See, I brought him. Hiya, Sir Simon. Well, what's cooking? Cooking? Yes, I mean, what's all the mystery? Go on, Sir Simon. Ask him. <laughs> uh, well, uh, tell me, pretty. Dost thou by any miracle remember aught of thine ancestors? Ancestors? Well, my old man would never look his up. Said he was afraid one might turn up that ended in the hot seat. <laughs> hot seat? Nowadays, England and America have everything in common, except, of course, the language. Think back, Cuppy, and try to remember. Well, I had an Aunt Martha. She was a little wacky on the subject. Traced my mother's family tree back to some guy that landed in Massachusetts way, way back. Name was, uh, Marmalade. No, no, uh... Mount Morency? No. A Marmaduke. That same Marmaduke who fled to Salem after Cromwell, Cromwell scattered the chivalry of England to the four winds? Oh, Sir Simon. You knew him? The son of my brother Anthony. Now, take it easy. How do you know it's the same Marmaduke? By the birthmark of the Cantervilles, observed beneath the ruffle of my collar. Holy cats. A birthmark same as mine. Now show me thine, please. Holy cats, indeed. What did I tell you? Well, I'll be... Well, well that makes me your, uh... Nephew. Great, 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 great nephew. Aye, thou art a kinsman. A kinsman who can free me from these earthly bonds. Huh? By performing a brave deed in his name. You mean that's all I have to do? Thou art a Canterville, the bluest blood in all broad England. Wilt wear my signet ring and carry it into battle in my behalf. You must save him, Cuppy. He's so old and sleepy. Okay, it's a deal. The first time they turn me loose on those Nazis. I shall be everlastingly grateful, nephew. I, too. Thumbs up, Uncle. It's in the bag. Good night, Sir Simon. Good night. Godspeed. Oh, Father, grant that he be not like the others. <laughs> Get a lot of what? A bulletin from the lieutenant. Oh. Well, will you listen to this? Because of inefficiency of platoon billeted at Canterville Castle, cause of which has not yet been satisfactorily explained, all leaves to London are hereby canceled. Oh, I could tell him the cause. Nobody around here can get me sleep. How can we sleep with a ghost in the joint? What gets me, the Louis still thinks we stayed up all night shooting crap. If he'd only seen the ghost. Oh, listen, you guys, why don't you lay off that poor old ghost? He's perfectly harmless. Harmless? Uh, he just ruined our weekend. Well, he's just doing his job. A ghost has to groan through keyholes and rattle chains. Why the sudden sympathy? Well, I've got a sort of personal interest in him. Gentlemen, I have every reason to believe that I am the long-lost Duke of Canterville, the bluest blood in all England. Oh. The Duke of Canterville yet, huh? Seems to me I seen you in the induction center, buddy. If I were you, I'd be careful what I said and did, see? Like what? Well, like uh, loafing on my lawn and uh, talking before you're talked to. So this is your private lawn, huh, Dookie? Yeah. Only you can lie on it? Yeah. Excuse me, your grace. Then why? Hey! <laughs> Sit on him, Eddie, and leave us remove his royal britches. It's an all English costume. Yeah, deep pants in the Duke. <laughs> Come on. Hey, put it on. I got him. Here's his pants. Okay, Dookie, you can get up now. Hey, fellas, look. Carriage is coming. It's Lady Jessica and a dame. Hey, give me my pants. Get behind us, puppy. Gather around him, gents. There's dames coming. Good afternoon, everybody. This is my aunt, Mrs. Pulverdine. How do you do? Cuppy, won't you come and meet my aunt? Well, if you don't mind, I'd better meet her from back here. <laughs> How do you do? Why are you hiding behind the others? Oh, it's just sort of a, a military procedure, Lady Jessica. Oh, uh, Cuppy, I mean all of you. Auntie said I might invite you to the party in the village this afternoon. Oh, <laughs> it's only a Saturday at home dance, but there'll be refreshments. Uh, James, too? I mean, Scott? I mean, uh, Doyle's? Oh, yes. 
And you'll all come. Uh, yeah, we'll be there. Four o'clock at the service center. Don't forget. Oh, that's the mail. Well, what sort of a uniform is that? Why, Cuffy's wearing kilt. Oh. It's very nice of you to dance with me, Cuffy. Oh, not at all, my lady. But I'm afraid I'll never learn this kind of dancing. Why, you're cutting the rug to ribbons. Cutting a rug? Well, what I mean is, you give with a jive. How's it feel to be a slick chick? Oh, fine. But does it always make you so dizzy? <laughs> okay, okay. What would you say to a class of fun? Hey, Cuffy! Cuffy, come in! What do you want? Oh, hiya, Sarge. I want you should settle an argument. Well, let's see what this is all about, Jessica. What kind of an argument? Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Cawthorn. Good afternoon, milady. Cuffy, I was telling Mr. Cawthorn the lieutenant thinks it's applesauce about the ghost. Oh? As a native of Canterville, gentlemen, I believe you saw the ghost right enough. But the day will never dawn when he'll run from a human being. Okay, Dukey, uh, you tell him. Dukey? Yeah, Cuffy here. He's the Duke of Canterville. Ain't you, Cuff? Well, in a uh, manner of speaking, I'm... <laughs> oh, what's a joke? <laughs> My dear boy, if you wanted to impersonate a British nobleman, you'd never choose a Canterville... Oh, <clears throat> Lady Jessica, my profound apologies. And just what's wrong with being a Canterville? Well, since you're so well acquainted with the ghost, sir, I suggest that you ask him. Yes. Yes, I think I will. Oh, Cuffy, will you dance with me again? Oh, sure, sure, lady. Sir Simon, cut it out. Cut it out, will you? Hmm? Who, who's that? It's me, Cuffy. I've been looking for you since midnight. Where have you been? In the North Turret gibbering. I'm sorry you overheard. I'm in poor voice tonight. Look, if you're supposed to hang around here until a Canterville does a brave deed for you, how come you're still here after 300 years? Oh, I've been waiting for you to ask. In all that time, someone must have tried to help you. Excuse me, I really must get back to work. Now, wait a minute. Quit stalling. What's wrong with the Cantervilles? If you're trying to hold out on me, I'll... Hey, I'll... Kinsman, I was merely trying to spare these. Well, spare me what? Go on, spill it. Mayhap it is better as thine ancestors speak for themselves. Come with me into the portrait gallery. This is the portrait gallery, nephew. Hey, would you look at those pictures? Gaze upon them, our noble family. Sir Gerald de Canterville, proud skipper of the frigate Cranston. When she sank, he was the first to leave the ship. <laughs> Sir Andrew de Canterville, he saw a grenadier lose a finger at Blenheim Battle and swooned away. And the blessed twins, Lieutenant Paul, rode the wrong way in the charge of the Light Brigade. <laughs> Lieutenant Peter was ten lengths ahead of him. You mean they were all cowards? All oh, I, of all the heroic families that for centuries have brightened the glory of England, ours had to be a brood of lily-livered titmice. So that's why you held out on me. You thought if I found out, I'd be the same way. Oh, maybe not at all. It never entered my mind. Well, then what, what are you making all the fuss about? I don't care what the others did. This is Cuffy Williams, see? I said, really. All right, then. That's all I wanted to find out. Now, I've got to get back to my bunk before the sergeant misses. A dear kinsman, would that I could believe that he was different. All right, men. This is it. Start loading the trucks. Battle equipment. Walker, look after dynamite plunger boxes and fusing the wires. We're going over. Okay, Sergeant. William, take off that ring. It'll shine in the dark. Okay. And don't stick it in your pocket if it's worth anything. Well, it's sort of a family heirloom. You better leave it in the castle. Make it snappy. This is it, huh, Sarge? I had not to tell you this, but you'll know soon enough. We're crossing the channel. We're making a raid on the coast of France. All right, let's go. Start bringing up the truck. <laughs> You're going away. 
Looks like it, Lady Jessica. Then, then maybe you'll have a chance to do a brave deed for Uncle Simon. Listen, lady, I know there's a yellow streak down the family back a mile wide. Sir Simon told me. But you're not going to let it worry you. Well, how do you think it makes me feel? Copy, you told me yourself. You don't have to be afraid if you think you're not. Yeah, yeah, I know. Copy, I believe in you. And if you have any children of your own, I know they'll believe in you. Children? I haven't any children. I haven't even got a wife. Well, maybe someday, maybe someday you'll want to marry somebody. Well, that's the last thing on my mind. And I'll lay off. I gotta get going. Oh, coffee, coffee. Off to the walls. Our kinsman hides himself to battle. Oh, Sir Simon, Brother. I'm so worried about Brother. coffee. Now, 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 my lady. Tears never steal the noble heart to valor. Upon the craven foe, our heroes furious might... You're worried. How do you think I feel? <laughs> our stars will continue with the Canterville Ghost in just a moment. Who are you phoning, Sally? I'm getting a weather report. Have some blankets to wash soon. But what's the weather got to do with it? 5 p.m. Temperature 73 degrees. Humidity 49 percent. Tonight clear. Lower temperature about 64. Tomorrow sunny and mild. Highest temperature about 75 degrees. Gentle to moderate winds. 5 p.m. Temperature... Of course, that isn't really how it will be over the country tomorrow. But in lots of cities, you can get an up-to-the-hour weather report over the phone. Will you please tell me what all this has to do with washing blankets? Why, obviously, you need a good day for it. Not too hot, not too cold, not too windy. Do women wash blankets in the middle of June? That's the best time, before storing them away for the summer. <laughs> Moths in particular. They don't like clean wool as well as soiled wool. So just whisk your blankets through rich, lukewarm Lux Studs. Hold on, Sally. I can't see a woman whisking a wet, heavy blanket through anything. Oh, it's easy with Lux. Just make sure you have lots and lots of suds. The suds do the work. Wouldn't a machine help? Sure, if you're lucky enough to have one. But don't run the machine too long. That's as bad as rubbing. Too much agitation mats and shrinks the wool. Leaves it harsh and scratchy. Three to five minutes is about right for a machine. And use gentle Lux flakes so your blankets will stay soft and fluffy. Be sure to hang the blankets in the shade over two or three parallel lines. That way, the air can circulate through it, and the weight of the water won't pull it out of shape. Thanks for the tip, Sally. You certainly deserve a, a B.A. for all that advice. Bachelor of Arts? No. Blanket Authority. Now, back to Hal Wallace and our stars. Act Three of The Canterville Ghost, starring Margaret O'Brien as Lady Jessica... Charles Lawton as Sir Simon, and Tom Drake as Cuffy Williams. In the black of night, a handful of American rangers have landed somewhere on the coast of France and are creeping stealthily inland. Back in England, the Canterville ghost rages in the portrait gallery, bolstering his anemic hopes by hurling defiance at his ancestors. Ye skulking, cringing, misbegotten peafowls, insults painted upon canvas, ye wretched poltroons, not for long now shall I have you leering at me with cynical mockery. Not for long, ye dribble pussies. <laughs> A kinsman worthy of the name now wears my signet ring in battle. Meanwhile, in the cottage on the castle grounds, a sleepless lady Jessica bolsters her hopes in the way most mortals do. Oh, please take care of Cuffy, Lord. Don't let him get hurt. And Uncle Simon, he's such a poor, funny old ghost. And he's so tired. Won't you please let Cuffy do a brave deed so he can go to sleep? And please take care of Cuffy. Ye 
gallery of lily-livered rabbits. Ye shake me milk sops. Well mayest thou cower in thy gilded frames, shamed by a colonial by Cuffy Williams. As for thee, fat Algernon, who posed for two years as a dowager to escape fighting a duel, I spit in thine eye. <laughs> thee, Sir Percival, who fought through the Thirty Years' War without firing a shot, thee also. <laughs> From yonder bunk in yonder room, has risen a lion-hearted kinsman. Yonder bunk. What gleams there in the moonlight? The ring. The signet ring. Imbecile. Don't hear for that. I was speeding to him. It's too late. The dog is too late. Okay, men. We're on enemy territory. Well, remember... We're here for one purpose only, to blow up the oil with my face, Sergeant. Finally, he's got to go at 2350. Now, check your watches. It's now 2307. Right, Jordan, Baker, William. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get off the road and set up a machine gun in the ditch. If you see any Jerry's, it's up to you to hold them off while the rest of us get back. Check, check. Sir, check. Jordan, you'll find telephone wires down the road. Now, cut them and get back to cuff your trigger. Get going. Okay, Sarge. See you later, kid. The rest of us will go up this side road. Well, after the explosion, wait till the last man has reached the shore, then join us. Yes, sir. Okay. Good luck. Coffee. Yeah? There's a hill right in back of us. Get up there and keep watch. What about you? I'll set up the machine gun. You see anything, get back here on the double. Okay. Who's that? Who's there? All are out fire. Now you were kindling. It's only I. Oh, what the devil are you doing here? You forgot the ring. You left it in the castle. Here, nephew. Oh, get away from me. Put it in thy pocket. Only have it on thy person when the test comes. All right, give it here. Oh, thank you. Thank you, nephew. Now, thinkest thou the enemy will come this way? Take it, man, with but half an eye one can see that thou hast the courage of St. George. Horse feathers, get out of here, will you? Oh, I, I merely thought I could... Bolster you up in case you were a bit squeamish. I want to be squeamish. Hey, Cuffy. Yeah? You all right? Sure. What time is it? 23.50. Who dost thou converse with? Look, Sir Simon, I thought I told you. <laughs> Sounds. What mighty blast is that? The refinery. They've blown it up. If you... If you look down yonder road... Motorcycles. Jerry's. Keep a cool head. Keep a cool head. Trigger. Trigger. Motorcycles up a draw. Get out here and hold the ammunition belt. Keep a cool head. Keep a cool head. Oh, get out of here. Beat it. Huh? What's the matter with you? Look, Trigger. Jerry's. Lots of them. What are you waiting for? Nothing. <laughs> Trigger, what's the matter? What's the matter, Trigger? Looks like you've got to take over, Cuffy. Trigger. Cuffy. Get him, Cuffy. Get him. The machine gun. Jordan be back soon. Yeah. Yeah, Jordan. Jordan. Fire, nephew. Fire. Fire. Nephew. Nephew. Blood. Trigger's blood. Nephew. They're drawing closer. Blood. What's the matter with you? He's dead, Jordan. Trigger. Trigger's Give dead. Me. Give me that machine gun. Give it to me, you fool. At ease, men. Well, men, the colonel's compliments. After last night's raid, he wants me to tell you you were the best so and so platoon in the whole outfit. Yeah. But I'm not satisfied. Oh. So we're going to take a little jaunt into these woods and iron out the mistakes we made right now. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Williams. Yes, sir. Here a minute. Yes, sir. Right. Williams, right. I've discussed your case with the colonel. We, uh, we both considered what happened last night. And he feels we have no alternative but to transfer you back to your old outfit. Line up there. Yes, sir. Remember, Williams, there are men who may be psychologically unfit for combat who can still perform useful roles in service. I'll pack up your things. I'll arrange for your transfer when we get back from maneuvers. What? Thank you, sir. Good luck, Williams. Yes? The tune is formed. All right, Sergeant. Left face. Right shoulder. Turn. Forward. Turn. Oh, 
Cuffy, Cuffy, I've been expecting you all morning. What's happened? Oh, you better run along home, lady. I've got to go and unpack. You're going away? Yeah. Oh, Cuffy. That's right. Look at me. I'm a cannibal, all right. Just as cowardly as the rest of them. No, Cuffy, no. Don't say that. You're not a coward. You're brave. I know it. I know it. All right, lady. Have it your own way. Cuffy. I'm sorry it turned out like this. Goodbye, lady. Cuffy. Ah, wretched me that I should have pinned my faith again upon a canterville. Oh, pipe down, Sir Simon, will you? And get down off that chandelier. It makes me nervous. <laughs> nervous. Aye, that I can well believe. Oh, shut up. Get out. I've got to pack. Pack then and leave me to my fate. Thou who hast raised my hopes only to dash them like a robin on a rock of granite. Cuffy, Cuffy. Oh, my lady, you can't come in here. I know it's your castle, but, well, this is barracks. There's a parachute. I saw it coming down. Parachute? parachute. Maybe a Nazi came down in it. Oh, Cuffy, what do we do? Where did you see it? It came down the side of the stone bridge. Where is the stone bridge? Do you know the old side road? No. Then I'll take you there. I know a shortcut. All right, come on. We'll grab a jeep. Hurry. Nephew, wait for me. Wait for me. There it is, Cuffy. The parachute. Yeah, caught in a tree. I don't see anybody, but you better stay here. I'm going to take a look around. Step down in the jeep now. Step down. Cuffy, look over there. Huh? All through our woods. Those men. Who oh, are they? Don't worry about them. They're rangers. Maneuvers. Yeah, that's where I'd be if I hadn't. Cuffy, what is it? In the bushes. A parachute mine. A bomb, a blockbuster. Oh, let's get out of here, lady. If that thing goes off, it'll kill every living thing within a half a mile. We gotta get... Oh... Oh, the rangers. They're scattered all through the woods. They'll be killed. Get back to the castle. Run, quick. Aren't you coming? No, I've got to drag it away with a jeep. Dump it over the cliff. Get going now. Run, quick. Hide in the tower. Run! Lady Jessica? Oh, Uncle Simon. Where's Cuffy? Has he encountered the enemy? Oh, no, Uncle Simon. Cuffy's moving a blockbuster. He's doing the bravest deed there ever was. He got Dearest, I believe again. Where? This way. Down to here. There. Oh, oh, save thy breath, child. Look to his quaking knees, his eyes that tremble with the ague, his hand that shrinks from contact with yon lethal instrument. No, Uncle, no. Cuffy, Cuffy. Cuffy, you don't, you can do it. You were doing a brave deed. I, I can't touch it. There's a timer on it. The least little jar would set a ticking. I... Cuffy, you were doing a brave deed. Don't you see? You can do it. You don't have to be afraid because you're a cannibal. Look, Cuffy, I'm not afraid of the bomb. Look, Cuffy, I'm kicking it. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of anything. Because, because... That sounds it's ticking. You started it ticking. Okay, lady. Ah, right, thanks for the lesson. I'm all right now. You run for it. Go on, get out of here. This thing goes off in 60 seconds. Oh, Cuffy. Hurry, I'm dragging this thing out of here. Go on, get out of my way, my lady. Run for it. Careful, you, Neville. Careful, careful. Hop on, Uncle. Keep your eye on that tow chain. Let me know if it slips. Well, we're out of the underbrush. Hold on now. Oops. Again. Nephew, look out, the Rangers. Hey, you Rangers, run for your life. I've got a blockbuster on here. A time bomb. Run, blockbuster. What? Oh, where are we going, nephew? In the cliff, we'll dump it over the ravine if we get that far. How many more seconds? I don't know, maybe 20. Five, six, seven, eight, what? ten, eleven. There's the ravine, we'd better jump. Let the jeep take it over. There she goes. Oh, we just made it. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 
32, 33, 34, 35. Say, what's all this hooey about ticking? Oh, it's a dud. We never were in any danger. All that work... Thank goodness you're all right. It must have been an air raid. No, it was coffee. Coffee? Need of a stone bridge, a bomb from a parachute. Coffee blew it up. Coffee saved everyone. And if coffee blew it up, then coffee's blown up too. Roll out the barrel. We'll have a barrel of fun. Roll out the barrels. We've got the blues on the run. Coffee, coffee. Out the song of good cheer. Now's the time to roll the barrel for the gang's all here. Cuffy, Cuffy, you're alive. Cuffy, Cuffy, you're alive. What happened? Happened? I just dumped that cockeyed thing right into the ravine. Like St. George slaying the cockeyed dragon. Oh, Uncle Simon. What child? If Cuffy is a cannibal, and if he's done a brave deed for you, then, then why are you still here? Hmm? Yeah. Why aren't you in the garden beyond the pine woods? Yay, verily. Why not? Well, if you're going, you better hurry. Here come the rangers. Father? Father? Why am I still in mortal coils? Thank you, niece. Farewell. Farewell. He's gone. Did you see that, Lieutenant? Yeah, that's what we've been trying to... T- hey, Lieutenant! Hey, guys, the lorry has faded. <laughs> Garden beyond the pine woods. Looks like a mighty restful place. Isn't it nice that he can have a little plot to call his own? And a headstone of his own, too. Well, that was the ranger's idea. We had it inscribed, see? Sir Simon de Canterville, 1603-1943. Gee, that certainly is a long time to go without sleep. Yes. But you nearly always have to wait for something that you want very much, Cuffy. Huh? How old are you? How old? Why? I shall be eight in May. Stars Charles Lawton, Margaret O'Brien, and Tom Drake return for their curtain calls in just a moment. Meanwhile, here are Patty and Kay planning their vacation. Oh, I don't think you'd like that place, Patty, even if it is so nearby. I was there last summer and it was awfully noisy. But it sounds good. Beach, tennis, dancing every night. Well, that's just the trouble. It's right near a Coast Guard station and the boys come over to the dances. Sometimes everybody ends up singing. Well, it's impossible to get any sleep. Hi, Kay. You sound like an old fuss budget. I thought you liked dancing. Well, well, there were more girls than fellows. Oh, a little thing like that shouldn't stop a cute gal like you. Unless... What? Skip it. I I forgot what I was going to say. Have you seen the new movie at Parker's? Patty didn't forget what she had in mind, but how could she tell Kay what she was really thinking? Kay's cute enough to get any man she wants. If only she were as sweet and fresh as she looks. But you just can't tell even your best friend that she's careless about daintiness. If I could only give her a hint about luxing under things after every wearing, luxing her dresses and blouses often, if I could tell her how fresh and sweet it leaves them, then she wouldn't risk offending. She'd have all the fun she deserves. Gentle Lux Care does protect daintiness. And it's kind to fabrics, too. Keeps lovely under things new looking three times as long. Don't use hot water, strong soap, or or handle nice things roughly. That kind of treatment makes them look faded and drab far too soon. Lux Care is thrifty care. Here's Hal Wallace and our stars. 
Back to our footlights come Margaret O'Brien and Tom Drake, along with the ex-phantom of our cast, Charles Lawton, now very much in the flesh. I must you put it quite that way, Hal, very much in the flesh. I don't like that. Well, actually, Charles, you look as if you'd lost a little weight. No, no, it's around here somewhere. <laughs> well, Mr. Lawton, you carried plenty of weight as a ghost, didn't you, Margaret? Mr. Lawton's my favorite ghost. Have you ever met a real ghost, Margaret? No, but I'd like to. I really believe you would, Margaret. You know, there's no reason why ghosts shouldn't be highly useful citizens. Well, rather expendable in war times, wouldn't you say, Mr. Lord? No, no. There might be lots of useful things a ghost could do in wartime. They could contribute clanking chains and creaking armor to the scrap drive. Maybe they could sell war bonds. That's right, Margaret. By haunting the conscious conscience of individuals so chicken hearted as not to buy their fullest share. Do you buy war bonds, Margaret? Oh, yes. That's where all my money goes. Well, you couldn't find a better way to spend it. And if you go to see Tom Drake and Metro Goldwyn Mayor's This Man's Navy, you'll get an idea of where your money's going in building the greatest navy in the world about to meet its greatest test in history. Well, I don't think any of us need too much persuading to buy war bonds, Mr. Wallace. Uh, tell us, Hal, what are you having in this theater next week? Next Monday night, we bring you one of the most talked of dramas of the year, The Woman in the Window, starring Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, and Dan Duryea. If you have never felt sympathy for a murderer, you will in this gripping story of a man who is trapped to kill in self-defense and teams with a woman to conceal their crime from the police. Well, Hal, for sheer suspense, I don't think I know any more exciting play. We'll be listening, Mr. Wallace. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Margaret. All our thanks. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes... Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, and Dan Duryea in The Woman in the Window. This is Hal Wallace saying good night from Hollywood. The Canterville Ghost was presented through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Anchors Away. The next Hal Wallace production for Paramount is You Came Along, starring Robert Cummings, Elizabeth Scott, and Don DeFore. Charles Lawton will soon be seen in the Benedict Bogus picture, Captain Kidd. Heard in tonight's cast were Eric Snowden, Boyd Davis, Claire Verdera, Ed Emerson, Gerald Moore, Gloria Gordon, Eddie Marr, Clifton Young, Robert Cole, Charles Seal, and Norman Field. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear The Woman in the Window with Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, and Dan Durier. Stop. Hold that measuring cup, lady. Be sure your precious hard-to-get sugar is invested, not wasted. Do all your baking the sure way, the spry way. For dependably light, velvety-rich cakes, tender, flaky pastry, for all your cooking, be sure of success. Get pure, all vegetable shortening at its creamy best. That's spry, S-P-R-Y. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of The Woman in the Window with Edward G. Robinson, Joan Bennett, and Dan Duryea. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>